Good evening. I'm Sue Squire, and tonight we are going to conquer the comma. In the next seven minutes, I'm going to give you the tools that you need to confidently conquer the comma once and for all. The comma is one of the most common mistakes people make today in writing. Why? Because some use too many commas, some use not enough commas, and quite frankly what's going on is people are just putting commas into their sentences just because they think it looks good. I was one of those. I admit it. I used to cringe every time I'd have to send an email or send a correspondence to upper management. I'd use short and sweet sentences, do do period, do do period, too afraid to use a long sentence because I didn't know where the comma went. So I had to learn how to conquer the comma. I knew it was going to either make or break my career. Didn't matter how much knowledge I have or how much experience I have. If I can't write, then I don't look so smart. So I conquered the comma with the fanboys of grammar in the help of Purdue OWL. It's a writing lab online. So when we're done here, if you want to research a little bit more of how to use the comma and other pronunciation, feel free to do so. Anyone here know the uh, fanboys of grammar? All right, a few of you. Good. Well, tonight we're all going to learn. So let's get out our pens and paper, please. And we're going to want to write all these down. Fanboys, F, 4, A, and, N, nor, B, but, O, R, or, excuse me, yet, yet, S, so. And typically what happens is people use these fanboys in the middle of a sentence. They use a comma before or after the fanboy simply because they think that's what they have to do. It's a myth. You're only going to use a comma when it qualifies. The only time you're going to use a comma after a fanboy is when the very first word of your sentence is a fanboy. The only time. Very only time. So if you want to think about a little play on words, that's how I like to learn, you can think of it as first word fanboy, then comma. It's the only time you're going to put a comma after a fanboy. So we have a few examples here. So, comma, I am going to go to the store early. But, comma, I have to make a stop first. So the fanboy is the very first word of the sentence, so we're going to put a comma. Everything else is going to be a comma before the fanboy. That is, if it qualifies. And how does it qualify? Two complete sentences equal a comma. So what I mean by that is if you have two complete sentences, one before the fanboy and one after, then you're going to use a comma. Again, I like play on words. Helps me remember. Might help you too. So complete C equals comma. C. C equals C. Two complete sentences, you're going to use a comma. If you don't have two complete sentences, we're not going to use a comma. So I've come up with a takeout tool, an easy way of figuring out if you're going to use a comma. And that is, you're going to take out the fanboy and figure out if you have two complete sentences. So here we have a few examples. I can pick you up, comma, but I have to make a stop first. So if you take out the fanboy, which is the word but, you have, I can pick you up, period. Sounds good, right? Okay. Then we have, I have to make a stop first. Pretty good. Complete sentence. So we have two complete sentences. So do we have a comma? Yes. All right. A few more examples. He watched baseball, but prefers football. Now let's think about it. If we take out the but, which is the fanboy, he watched baseball. We have a complete sentence, right? Good. Prefers football, period. Do we have a complete sentence? No. So no comma. No complete sentence, no comma. All right, now we're going to practice a little more. Does she play the flute or the clarinet? Well, I don't know, but we're going to find out if we need a comma. So the fanboy here is or. Does she play the flute, period? Complete sentence? Sounds pretty good. I agree. The clarinet, period. Do we have a complete sentence? I don't think so. So no complete sentence, no comma. So this sentence actually looks good just the way it is. Second example, we went to the store and bought dinner. 
we went to the store, period. Makes sense. We go to the store all the time. Bought dinner, period. I don't think so. No comma, no two complete sentences, no comma. He took a taxi and I drove home. He took a taxi, period. Sounds pretty good. All right. I drove home, period. I drive home all the time. Sounds good. So we have two complete sentences, right? Right? So then do we have a comma? Complete sentences equal comma. So here we go for a quick review. Can I have an F? For. Can I have an A? And. Can I have an N? Nor. Can I have a B? But. Can I have an O? Or. How about a Y? Yet. How about an S? So. So you all got that written down, right? We want to use it as soon as we get back to work. So two complete sentences equal a comma. Okay? C equals C. The only time you're going to use a comma after a fanboy is when? That's right. Only when a fanboy comes at the beginning of a sentence. Everything else will be a comma before the fanboy if it qualifies. And how do we know if it qualifies? We're going to use our takeout tool. And then we're going to figure out if we have two complete sentences. Because only if we have two complete sentences are we going to use the comma. So congratulations. You now have the tools you need to conquer the comma. Thank you very much for your time, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did.